In this video, we will introduce arrays in Java, and we start with the definition of an array according to Java documentation. An array is defined as an object containing a fixed number of elements, all of the same data type. And here you have an example of an array being declared and instantiated. So these square brackets tell the Java virtual machine that you have an array of type int, and here is the identifier, ARR. The new keyword is used whenever we are instantiating an object, and here this number five is the length attribute of the array. So the recap down here in this example, we have an array uh, called ARR. It is an integer array, and that means that it can only hold integer elements and that it was instantiated with five elements, so it cannot change its size. Changing the size of ARR would actually instantiate a whole new array and allocate a new memory space for it. So just looking at the declarations, so here are some examples of array declarations. Notice we have the data type followed by the brackets followed by the variable name. It can also be the data type followed by the variable name followed by brackets. Both of these are correct. Both of these are accepted by the compiler. So here's an example of an integer array, a double array, Boolean, string, or we can make our own class data types and use that as the data type for our array. Instantiation, so that is whenever we use the new keyword and we can instantiate with a constructor or we can instantiate with an initializer list. Now when we make the initializer list, that will send the length of the array to the constructor as well. So this will create an array of length four if you look at ARR2. And the difference is when we use the constructor, like we have up above here, the default values for each data type is stored in the array. So by default, this would have four, I'm sorry, five elements of zero. And by default, an object array, this would have eight elements of null. So eight elements storing null, because null is the default type for an object. And the default type for a Boolean would be false, but we see we used an initializer list so that we can control the initial setup of what is stored in the array bool ARR. So when we initialize an array and store values in it, each value or element of the array corresponds to an index, and that index is used to retrieve or modify the elements in the array. So here we see we have an index equal to zero. So if we were to use num with square brackets zero, we can use this to either retrieve or to modify what is stored in the array num at index zero. So here I have a system out print at, of num2. So we would say, let's find index two. So zero, one, two is five. So it would print out five. Similarly, we can take num with index one and set it equal to 13. That would then overwrite the zero and replace it with 13. And then if we were to print num at index one, it would print 13. 
And if we wanted to print our array, we see that if we send the variable name representing our array to the print ln command, we get the default two-string output that the Java object class um, uses for printing Java objects. And we see that that is the class at a reference number. So this class, you see the left bracket. The left bracket means we have an array. The capital I means of integer type. And then we have the at symbol and our reference. So if we wanted to print out the elements of the array, we can construct a string that accomplishes this. So here you see there is a string.out.println. I have a left bracket. Then we concatenate with the element at zero. Then we concatenate with a comma. Then we concatenate with the element at one, with a comma, with the next element, so on and so forth until we get to the right bracket and it would output our array as we've formatted it in our string. So just to recap, the default two-string method from the object class is what the array uses, and that gives us this output uh, with class at reference. And we can modify how to print strings uh, or print arrays by using strings that we construct with their elements. And we can even use a method to define to do this. So before we can construct a method or a for loop, we need to make sure we don't run into index out of bound errors. So we can use the attribute length to identify the length of the array. And we see that the length is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means our top index is gonna be one less than the length. And we will use this with for loops to help construct the strings for printing out arrays. So here is a method that is defined to print out the array. And you see that it's public static, static because we don't have to create an object of our class. We can just call on this method to work with elements in the main method. String is the data type it's going to return. We see that we're returning a string called str, which was declared in the first line of the method. This is our method name, print array, and here is our parameter. We have a parameter that is an integer array object. And when we pass arrays to methods, we are to understand that arrays are passed to methods by the values they store. And inside of our method, we have a for loop starts at zero because our arrays have a first index value of zero. And then here is i less than array dot length. Again, this array has a length of six. So the largest integer less than six is five. So i less than six returns five. And it's doing this based on the name of the parameter. Even though this array is called num, when it gets passed to this method, it will be passed its values to an array called ARR. So now ARR has the same length as num and the same elements as num, and ARR is used um, to go through the for loop and concatenate each element to the string. So let me analyze what's happening in this method with you. First, we create a string with a left bracket. Then when we enter the for loop, it is going to count from zero to five because i less than six has a maximum of five. It will increment by one. 
When it comes into the for loop, it has an if statement. If i is less than arr minus one, so now arr minus dot length minus one is five. If i is less than five, that means we have a maximum of four. So that means if it is any, the second to last element or sooner in the array index, it will concatenate the element with a comma. If it is the very last element, it will concatenate the element with the right end bracket. So the if else statement is to determine whether we need a comma or the right uh, bracket. And then once that string is done being constructed, the method returns str, and then str can be printed by the println method. So here you see that the system.out.println calls the print array method, sends the num array to it, and here is the output we get because we started with the left bracket, we added commas if it was the second to last element or earlier in the array index list. And when it was the last element, it got followed by a right bracket. And this is our output. And we can format how we want our arrays printed in whatever way we want. Um, if we were to relate this to a field in Algebra 2, and if we had a matrix, we wanted this to represent We could have formatted the output in this way and just added a line break to the string constructor before we sent it to the println method. So if this was the way we wanted our array to be represented on screen, we could have formatted it in such a way. Just some final remarks is that when we make a print array method, it is only good for the data type of the parameter. So this is an integer array type. If I needed a print array method to handle strings, then we have to overload the method. And overloading the method is using the same um, the same method name, the same method signature with a different parameter set. So you may have multiple print array methods in your class to handle integer arrays, boolean arrays, string arrays, or if you made up a class called student class and have student arrays, you would have to define your print array method and multiple times, which means that you would be overloading the method to handle the different parameters. Okay, so that's the end of this lecture. And I have some sample videos where I use the BlueJay uh, IDE coding environment and some array exercises which will follow this video and you can look through some of those coding examples.